Hi, my name is Heather Breedlove and I'm going to be teaching a lesson today on character and setting using the book Corduroy. Good morning boys and girls. Today we're going to be talking about two important parts of the story. The first part we're going to talk about are characters and the second part we're going to talk about is the setting. Now does anybody know who, what characters are? Right, characters are who the story is about. Now raising your hand, can you tell me some characters that we've read about this year? Right, we've had some characters who are people. And we've had some characters that were animals. Good. Now, we've also been talking about the setting this year. Can anyone raise their hand and tell me what the setting is? Right, the setting is where the story takes place. Now, I'm going to give you one example of setting and I want you to try to think of some more. One place the story can take place is at a school. Can someone raise their hand and tell me another place? Right, it could be outside. The setting could be at a house. Very good. The setting is anywhere that the story takes place, and the reason it's so important is because it helps us understand the story better. Now, what I want you paying attention to when I read today are the characters and the setting in this book, Corduroy. Let's start. Okay. Corduroy is a bear who once lived in the toy department of a big store. Day after day, he waited with all the other animals and dolls for somebody to come along and take him home. Now, can someone tell me who they think an important character is in the story? Very good, Corduroy. The store was always filled with shoppers buying all sorts of things, but no one ever seemed to want a small bear in green overalls. Then one morning, a little girl stopped and looked straight into Corduroy's bright eyes. Oh, Mommy, she said, look. There's the very bear I've always wanted. Not today, dear, her mother sighed. I've spent too much already. Besides, he doesn't look new. He's lost the button to one of his shoulder straps. Now, can somebody tell me the setting of the story so far? Right, they're in a store. Corduroy watched them sadly as they walked away. I didn't know I'd lost a button, he said to himself. Tonight I'll go and see if I can find it. Late that evening, when all the shoppers had gone and the doors were shut and locked, Corduroy climbed carefully down from his shelf and began searching everywhere on the floor for his lost button. Suddenly, he felt the floor moving under him. Quite by accident, he had stepped on an escalator and up he went. Could this be a mountain, he wondered? I think I've always wanted to climb a mountain. Now, is he on a mountain? No, he's still in the store. He stepped off the escalator as it reached the next floor and there before his eyes was the most amazing sight. Tables and chairs and lamps and sofas and rows and rows of beds. This must be a palace, Corduroy gasped. I guess I've always wanted to be in a palace. Now is Corduroy in a palace? No, you're right, he's still in the store. He wandered around admiring the furniture. This must be a bed, he said. I've always wanted to sleep in a bed. And he crawled onto a large, thick mattress. All at once, he saw something small and round. Why, here's my button, he cried, and he tried to pick it up. But like all the other buttons on the mattress, it was tied down tight. Looks like he's got a problem. He yanked and pulled with both paws until pop, off came the button and off the mattress corduroy toppled. Bang into a tall floor lamp. Over it fell with a crash. Corduroy didn't know it, but there was someone else awake in the store. The night watchman was going, was going, was doing his rounds on the floor above. When he heard the crash, he came dashing down the escalator. Now who in the world did that, he exclaimed. Somebody must be hiding around here. 
Now this is another character, the Night Watchman. He flashed his light under and over sofas and beds until he came to the biggest bed of all, and there he saw two fuzzy brown ears sticking up from under the covers. Hello, he said. How did you get upstairs? The watchman tucked Corduroy under his arm and carried him down the escalator and set him on the shelf in the toy department with the other animals and dolls. Now where is the story still taking place? Right, it's still in the store. Corduroy was just waking up when the first customers came into the store in the morning and there looking at him with a wide warm smile was the same little girl he'd seen only the day before. Lisa, she said, and you're going to be my very own bear. Last night I counted what I've saved in my piggy bank and my mother said I could bring you home. Now is that another character? Right, it is. And her name is Lisa. Shall I put him in a box for you? The sales lady asked. Oh, no thank you, Lisa answered. And she carried Corduroy home in her arms. She ran all the way up four flights of stairs into her family's apartment and straight into her own, her own room. Now where is the story taking place? Very good, in Lisa's apartment. Corduroy blinked. There was a chair and a chest of drawers. Alongside a girl-sized bed stood a little bed just the right size for him. The room was small, nothing like that enormous palace in the department store. This must be home, he said. I know I've always wanted a home. Lisa sat down with Corduroy on her lap and began to sew a button on his overalls. I like the way you are, she said but you'll be more comfortable with your shoulder strap fastened. You must be a friend, said Corduroy. I've always wanted a friend. Me too, said Lisa, and gave him a big hug. Okay, boys and girls, now, the first thing we're going to do on our chart is we're going to put our title. Can someone raise your hand and tell me what's the title of the story we just read? Very good, Corduroy. And now we're going to review the characters in the setting. So can somebody raise their hand and tell me who's an important character in this story? Right, Corduroy. He was the first character we came across. And can someone tell me another important character? Very good, Lisa, the little girl who took Corduroy home. Now who's one other character that we came across in the story that helped Corduroy? Very good, the Watchman. Now let's talk about the setting one more time. Remember the setting is where the story was taking place, so can somebody raise their hand and tell me where was Corduroy during most of the story? Very good, he was in the store. And can someone tell me where Corduroy was at the end of the story? You're right. He was at Lisa's apartment, so the setting changed. All right, now for the rest of the year, I want you to always be thinking about when we read stories, the characters are who the story is about, and the setting is where the story takes place. Those are very important parts of each of the stories that we'll be reading.